This episode of Important If True is brought to you by Hover, the best and easiest and most user-friendly place to register your domain names. Mm. If you go to hoisted.zone, <laughs> a, uh, a URL we just registered with Hover, you can get $2 off your Hover purchase. That's hoisted.zone for $2 off your domain name registration. Hoisted zone. Go to hoisted.zone. Final thumbs business decisions. <laughs> should we just should we lose money on this ad? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's June twenty second, twenty seventeen, and this is important if true. <laughs> For vital thumbs, I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brickin. Rory and Drake Rockin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out. It's uh, gonna, we got like two more weeks, and then it's yeah. just—it's oh, just, there's always there's always just ways. get spades though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for until we get into like you trying to adopt the cadence of famous movie quotes that are like you know. <laughs> just, uh, Welcome <laughs> to important. Well, I can't just do John one, Hammond and here. this. <laughs> Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. That's yeah, tough. It's tough to communicate without being him. Yeah, that's true. I was walking to the studio this morning to record this podcast, and mm-hmm. I found myself walking next to like the most exquisitely dressed older gentleman. Like mm. the full. You see that occasionally. Like, it's nice. It was like it was. He was so like well suited that it was potentially like a four piece suit. I couldn't actually mm. see the amount of layers, <laughs> but it was like the cravat, the he, like the vest. Yeah. Uh, he pulled his smartphone out from his from his jacket, and it was like it's like mine. It's like an iPhone five, like the smaller one. And he's yeah. old, so he was like holding it up to his face very closely to see it. And then he pulled from his breast pocket uh, a tiny magnifying glass, like gold, <laughs> that sort of gold rimmed, and yes. held it and held it up like oh the way that one would hold oh a monocle God. to read his Holy phone. Shit. And I just went. <gasps> <laughs> and then and then he turned around the corner and I have never seen him again. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that guy exists in real life. An old man who basically like monocles his tiny iPhone that it brings out of his finely <laughs> tailored jacket. Wow. So if you thought you were living life, you you aren't. Um <laughs> it was really good though, just seeing that yeah. like old like old rich man behavior of like the most classic, like fucking monopoly man yeah. style, but yeah. like used to like peruse his uh his <laughs> his uh probably he's probably looking at stocks for sure. some like yeah real solid old co- companies but mm-hmm. maybe he was on snapchat i will never know <laughs> <laughs> man i guess i have something to aspire to yeah that's very good yeah, yeah chris if you're not that guy in like f- 30, five five years year. oh five years <laughs> what okay you got <laughs> <laughs> what you described him as an older gentleman. What the hell does that mean? Okay, you're right. You've got you got, if you you've got thirty years. Yeah, I'll give myself thirty. <laughs> I'm I'm pleased. I'm pleased about your your experience. It was good. Yeah. Uh, so I guess in the vein of tradition colliding with modernity, um, last week. <laughs> so last week we were informed about something called the Bristol Stool Scale. Which is a, uh, it's not a rating. It's not, it's a way it's to, a, it's a way to classify yes. poos. Yeah. It's a poo classification scale. And, uh, so <laughs> we also talk about robots a lot. We all, yeah. And Mike, uh, a reader named Michael has written in with an email that sort of combines those things in a way that I don't entirely understand. He says, at the intersection of poop and robots lies the lovely Bristol Robotics Laboratory, which bills itself as, quote, the most comprehensive academic center for multidisciplinary robotics research. They also make pooping robots. So before we get, uh, before I finish this email, something he doesn't address is like, is it a coincidence that they're also named after the same place as the, as the poo scale i think they're unrelated to the poo scale other than the city of bristol seems to just really god love their poos related research i don't even yes how is that like what are the chances yeah so all right (laughs) what is this what does the town sign say as you're driving into bristol i mean there's like they have to acknowledge this turn back yeah yeah, basically turn back yeah (laughs) we we (laughs) 
<laughs> it really so it whoever like, smelt it like what like what yeah the Bristol local, the local parentheses, we dealt it yeah <laughs> right yeah that's the local council yeah has been workshopping tourism related what a relief to come to Bristol yeah right yeah there's, there's all... yeah the <laughs> it it were this were the city of Bristol the center of a like. This like the Resident Evil movies, or one of the like the sort of mm. schlocky sci-fi movies where someone has suffered a huge outbreak and then become the eminent experts in the year twenty-one fifty. Bristol must have just had some horrible, horrible, horrible poo-related thing happen. <laughs> but they're like, we work together and like with the Boston molasses flood. Yeah, it's like with the university, we now have the greatest minds uh, in poo in poo <laughs> research, and this <laughs> never will never again. happen yeah. again. Yeah, right. yeah exactly, yeah. never again. <laughs> <laughs> first, first we researched and, and quantified all poos. I promise you. <laughs> and now yeah. we've built robots to process them. Not because it's but they've easy, gone but one it's step. Hard. They've gone one step farther than uh, than than processing them. Yeah. Though. So yeah. right. So the email continues. A few years ago, they produced EcoBot three or EcoBot the third. I don't know which it is. Uh, we know which one it yeah. is. <laughs> they produced Let's... EcoBot the third, a robot that collects its own food and water from the environment and then poops into its own litter tray. The idea was to create a self-sustainable robot that can exist by metabolizing organic matter. In practice, though, it sort of looks like a nightmare Dyson vacuum that rolls back and forth on a set of rails <laughs> inside a lucite box, pooping. <laughs> Apparently, it's not all fecal fun and games for the lads in Bristol, as they've also developed a way to power a cell phone with urine. That was the most spot-on local news yeah. little capper there. <laughs> Thanks for the podcast, Michael. Yeah, the, the EcoBot stuff, it's actually very, very cool in that, like, the, they're, poop is heavily involved, but their research is generally God, in... What has this podcast become? I can't even believe it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Continue. Well, <laughs> there are a lot of things you can I'll say. I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the, the whole intention with these guys is to sort of <clears throat> if make in, increasingly efficient use of biofuel and waste of like the, the EcoBot... The original EcoBot, EcoBot Senior. Oh, EcoBot the first. EcoBot, right. now known yeah. as EcoBot the first, right, yeah. Right, right. Was just power. It was powered by E. coli that was eating sugar, and now they've sort of been stepping up the things that EcoBot can eat and do. Um, I feel like EcoBot the third might be like one, of, like the nexus point of this podcast, where it's like <laughs> a, an amazing feat of human technology uh-huh. that also is a robot that feeds on organic matter uh, and poops and looks dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like people are people are looking at this going wow it's awesome it can just eat all the garbage that's around and sort of just the same way that human beings have a blind spot to the fact that we're just like the most wasteful things that like pound metric tons of food into ourselves and then just basically shit it out as useless sludge this robot is now doing the same thing and the language around it is the same where everyone's like it's amazing it's a robot that can eat stuff and then all of the videos are just like this gross yellow tube coming out of its back where this like brown <laughs> sludge comes out and the doctors are being parents we're like it's pooping it's pooping <laughs> the videos of the doctors oh, yeah, that of, video. The, of the scientists watching just like this just, just vile stuff just pour out of the butt of this robot. I, uh, feel, I feel like there's just bizarre. an inner truth to the discovery and sort of invention of this robot that uh -huh. maybe people haven't grasped, but I'm not quite there yet, but I'm almost wanting to award brain status to uh, <laughs> to, to EcoBot the third. Wow. For just like, <laughs> it's just, it's trying to tell us the same sorts of things that many what? of the other what 40 trying to tell us. Look at me. You've made me in your own image and I am a pooping <laughs> robot that feeds on organic matter. It, it may yeah. not it may not be full brain status, but it's like a brain in training. Sure. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> So that that's probably the last poo content for a while. Although thank you to everyone who sent us in. So yeah, we mm -hmm. probably have to take a moratorium on that for a little bit. Maybe maybe for a long time. A robot that poops is just like Oh you, no, robot EcoBot the third. You can't get a finer like laser sharp focus on the sad reality of our podcast and of us as a species than a story about scientists who invented a robot mm -hmm. that poops. It's no, definitely, it's definitely, definitely true. Yeah, that's, yes, it is important. Yes, and, and it is true. And very, very true. <laughs> yeah. Um, Patrick writes, "Hey, thumbs. I've been going through your back catalog and listening to your discussion of 2013's pop culture obsession with the 80s. In episode uh, 131 of Idle Thumbs, <clears throat> brought up a weird thought for me." 
With all the current love of the 90s, I'm now nostalgic for the nostalgia of a couple years ago. Basically, I remember back when we used to remember back to a better time. Any of you nostalgic for a different era's nostalgia? Yeah, it's a good question. I feel the same way. I feel like I haven't felt nostalgic in a little bit, but I can definitely remember feeling that way. Like I love nostalgia. I know it's like it's sort of like strange to like admit that because I feel like people are sort of It's not cool to like nostalgia. It's not cool to like nostalgia anymore, but yeah. I, maybe I'm nostalgic for a time where it was cool uh <laughs> to, to, to 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 feel nostalgic. Oh no. I but I feel like there's a real answer to this question and and um I think I think the the, the core of it has to be what is the time where the, the, like the the power of the nostalgia would be like the most palpable and just like delicious. And I think for me, that answer has got to be like the 1920s. Like I'm nostalgic for those people and their nostalgia when they could remember a time where oh. they didn't have to worry about any of this modern shit that we are t- worry about on our podcast. Like You're- the idea that you could sit there and like one, enjoy something like the radio, but then remember a time when there was nothing like that. Or like, you know that germs exist. But now they're just like, oh, fuck, like, oh, I got to wash my, there's like weird shit on my hands. Like, God, that must have been so amazing for those people to like hearken back to a time when all they had to worry about was like (laughs) fake, fake bullshit. What? I find this outrageous and slightly (laughs) offensive. What? (laughs) You, what you're describing first off is rich people. Uh, remembering back when rich people still had it comfortable, but also just go watch Midnight in Paris, the Woody oh. Allen movie that's literally about this <laughs> and is just a person literally time traveling into his nostalgia. And then inside that, he accidentally time travels into their nostalgia and it sucks all the way down. I'm not saying and it's any, such a good no, thing because of I'm that. I'm not saying that any of it is is actually like a time you'd want to go back I, to. I really like just come on. I can't, no, can't, no, no, no. I can't well, help but listen. think of the Jazz Age, a great time for everyone on no, Earth. And then when no, they're remembering you're back missing to when they were children you're missing my point i can't like, just ah uh, remembering back to like before the civil war like uh <laughs> well they would have been you they would have been nostalgia I, I, for it's like, nostalgia that's, though you're right the fact that it's nostalgia means you're only remembering the good times where you're like that's, what i want is to stack through three rose tinted glasses and look at what's <laughs> visible through those like yes. that's yeah. that's a valid thing to you think can't about. ignore that aspect but you literally like going back in time on in to any era is implying that yeah, you that you no. would like to like the, reverse progress the, i mean sure no of course the thing that the thing that this email made me think about about stacking nostalgia is one is the thing that i'm often fascinated by is when a certain decade's nostalgia comes back but it's the part of that decade's nostalgia that was already like a twice processed thing like when there were like some elements of like of '90s fashion that came back a few years ago, where you'd like dresses f- uh, that were sort of like that had the tiny little flowers all over them. That mm. was totally an early '90s thing. That's like of like the Blind Melon music video uh, era of just like. But then that stuff was a reflection of '60s hippie culture that was being pushed back on on '90s kids by baby boomers, or like I, this is stupidly. I was in high school in the '90s. Sorry, the other <laughs> '90s one that I was thinking about was like. Thinking back to uh, some of the 90s fashion and style that was that has not come back because it was wearing fucking zoot suits and chain wallets and stuff. But if that stuff ever comes back, it'll crack me up a lot because that stuff was totally just a ref- of, of the 90s wishing that they were the 30s or like... 80s love of Art Deco and like Italian bistros for some reason was like a high fashion thing where you had like a lot of what? like a lot of like expense like there's just that look man there's an 80s art deco yeah look that has like in the 80s you could have sort of a neon blue representation of a column next to one of those sort of airbrushed italian drawings of like a fat chef oh, in a restaurant sure, okay. and like those two things have no business coexisting except that it was the 80s version of the 1930s and if that stuff ever comes back it will it'll probably just skim the 80s part of it off the right. top i mean Nick, to your point about nostalgia for nostalgia, I mean, the, oh, go like ahead. I said, I'm nostalgic for nostalgia. I don't feel nostalgic anymore, just to be clear. You no, know, you however, do. You just said that you do. Well, we're I all had, nostalgic. I had something. to think about this question. I mean, I will I mean, say that I've always let's let's talk about Jurassic Park on this podcast and see how many of us <laughs> are or aren't nostalgic individuals. Oh, I'm not nostalgic about Jurassic Park. Uh huh. It's a classic film that we went and watched, and uh, you don't need to be nostalgic about it. It's amazing. Yeah, I think that's true. I think there's a difference between liking things and being generally nostalgic right okay. i think it's just not a it's not a, a switch that goes off one way or the other i feel like that no. the the channel of nostalgic emotions can run concurrently with yeah. very 
very considered adult thoughts, and that's and that's that's fine. I think it's when you when you drown yourself in sure. in only nostalgia that it's yeah. that it's bad. Man, like when you watch is- Hook, for instance, when you let's <laughs> when you watch a different Spielberg movie. Man, this this is the most unbelievably perfect segue imaginable because our our next email <laughs> from Andreas. <laughs> reads according to this article from a Norwegian news outlet there is a slime trend among the kids the kids make the slime themselves one kid claims she will never get tired of the slime and she could marry the slime with both slime and fidget spinners basically a postmodern yo-yo the 90s are slowly coming back to us greetings from Norway Andreas and Andreas links to an article on nrk.no which is a, a Norwegian site uh, as this person points out and I went to it and couldn't read any of it because it's in Norwegian. But I didn't need to read any of it because literally two days ago, my wife got back from work and told me out of the blue, a coworker brought their child to work. And this kid had homemade slime that she had made herself <laughs> what? What? that she was obsessed with <laughs> no. and was playing with and was talking about how much she liked her slime that she made. Today's children... Make artisanal bespoke slime. Yeah. None of that. Uh, you know what they make? You know what she made that, it out of? None of that gack. <laughs> Elmer's glue and borax. Jesus. Yeah. I asked, what was that? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Our, artisanal slime is made out of like the most classic ass American yeah. homemaking uh, tools. Yeah. Borax? Yeah. I, I, I said this morning. When homemade I, slime? Where does this come from? Why are kids making a homemade slime? I don't know. It's I. You I know, w- gotta know this now. You know one thing that uh, speaking of fucking nineties nostalgia or probably any era, a thing I will never understand is how in an era before we all had the internet, trends among elementary schoolers it's just TV to commercials still and Nickelodeon. be able to spread. Really, it's got to be right. You think it's all top down? You don't think any of it is sort of like some organic? of it? It's got, some of it's probably mm. bottom up. The other, I mean, way. that shit spreads through elementary schools in a way that vi- like internet virality is. Weak shit compared to the way it works in elementary schools. I think where you don't need the internet for it to happen. I think the, w- the the trick is the pre-internet school trends are probably actually way older than you think they are, and you just don't know. Like no, but they come back in a flash. Like yo-yos, that was like a one-year-long trend. Yo-yos just came- because the Dunkin' Yo-Yo ad was on Nickelodeon. I'm talking about really? s- yeah, that ad was everywhere. Wow, Kids doing trick true. shots all, all right, over the place. Even aware of that. It, no, I'm thinking of more that. stuff like. The like Pogs. I'm like or like I'm breaking an egg on your head like stuff like that like mm. or just weird little like tricks yeah. that kids could do that don't require anything else those are probably just old as hell and then they just pop up and spread around like a couple of counties but yeah yo-yos that's gotta be because there were there was those commercials of people doing amazing trick moves and then trying to tell you to buy a Dunkin' yo-yo I don't know if any kids actually bought an actual Dunkin' brand yo-yo but a lot of kids oh a lot of kids did but they probably 100%. at least asked for a yo-yo for their birthday that year and then yeah. they went to school with a yo-yo yeah yeah yo-yos just blew up and was it was the brightest flame that was then snuffed by school administrators who were like this is we this is insane how many Get these yo-yos, yo-yos the are, fuck out of here. Yeah. Homemade slime, what I hope that trend is, I'm sure there's an actual real reason, but my my hope, my, my hope against hope is, you know how sometimes you'll see something that someone has done that is cool and is maybe from history, and you yourself mm. don't know how it worked, but you're like, I think that I can figure out my own version of this and then you end up inventing a completely different thing or like your variant of it is is weird but accomplishes the same means where you're like, how did that person build that weird thing that I've seen? And I, I need one of those, and you'll make your own. I hope that this is somehow kids watching a like through just some stupid trend on the internet, watching garbage '90s things. On YouTube, yeah, watching garbage yeah. '90s things on YouTube, and then be like, "Where the fuck does this slime come from?" Because I'm well, sure there aren't companies f- filling well, filling toy stores so with with. F- there were like three slime variants. You oh, could there buy was like Gak, Gak and yeah. slime and a f- so another one. Like here's a, the thing, ugh, you fucking I, Gak, I had, Jesus. Once we got this email, I sent Sarah some last minute text. Oh to, man, to get okay. Some clarifications, and Do you have original research. Yeah. Yeah, so she said, um, you know, it's made from borax, which is what you use to kill ants. Uh, there was a kid playing with a ball of slime in the middle of her office, and I was amused she wasn't using an iPad or anything, just playing with a ball of glue and ant killer. Uh, and I, so, Jesus so Christ. <laughs> it's my slime, is what she told me. The kid, <laughs> she questioned the kid. The kid had never heard of Gak. 
Of course not. No. Oh, okay. Well, you is... you were propositing that that they were watching videos. Well, what I what I'm wondering is if the trend of homemade slime amongst kids came from someone doing uh, this sure. because they wanted to know because I, well, of the I, specific I, thing. If this was a thing, I guarantee there are dozens and dozens of YouTube videos being like, "Hey, want to know how to make your own slime? The thing that's like." Sweeping everywhere right now. I mean, there is a YouTube channel called Will It Slime. So there you go. Yeah. How many videos, some views is that? Probably a, I'm sure a it's, billion. Yeah. Elmer's Glue has 10 different recipes for slime on their website. Oh, yeah. This shit is blowing up the Elmer's Glue Corporation. If you, you, I, when I was searching for details about this, I looked around and there's like, there's a Snopes page about whether the Elmer's Glue company is going through shortages right now. Um, and they're, they're God, not. God, Elmer's Glue is like, our day has come. Finally, yeah. we're a longstanding brand that has become beloved for some stupid trash. <laughs> yeah. They love it. If you go to, there's people like at replying the Elmer's Glue Twitter account being like, my kid needs to make the slime. Where th- my Toys R Us is sold out. Where-? And then the Elmer's social person's like, I'm trying to find Elmer's Glue in your area. Like, I'm trying. There's, it's crazy. It's all happening. Oh, slime, slime is all happening right oh, now. Oh, I hate that it's Borax. <laughs> I love it also, though. Like, yeah. it's just... Elmer's glue and borax is a thing that would be like... Is your child bored at home? Like, this is just like... You could cut the, that slime ingredient out of, like, a Highlights magazine. Right. And then yeah, it would... Yeah, yeah, but it's like, yeah. also pour some mercury into the slime and it'll <laughs> goop around. And then, like, later, like, do not do any... Do not do this. Kids, do not... <laughs> Store it in your lead box for safety. <laughs> right, exactly. Then eat it to glow. Your poops will glow. Uh... CRISPR, yeah. This oh, this weird. like this slime trend it seems like it could be this where the kids like look back. It, yeah, this could easily be the lead paint or the mercury uh, of of now. Yeah, of our post millennial children and their and their slime craze. Yeah, um, I had three friends who who died in the great slime craze of summer twenty seventeen. <laughs> I mean, I got chicken pox from slime. So what? Wait, what? Oh no, yeah. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you Wait, didn't. Wait, just because. What do you mean? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, you fucking didn't. <laughs> this episode is me just saying something. Like, what the? No, you what? <laughs> you didn't get chicken pox. Yes, from I did. Slime. Yes, okay. I okay did. So was it like? You, it's, it, it the was way I used know, slime. The way I know. A kid with chicken pox touched your slime. The, a kid with chicken pox touched my slime. Allison on the block came over. We played with slime, but I never touched her. We only touched the slime. Uh huh. And not at the same time. Uh-huh. And I had chicken pox only in the spots where I touched the slime. <laughs> where, were the, where were those? I'm not, I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kids are going crazy I with these. I didn't realize chicken pox was a localized thing. I thought it just ha- you just got it. Yeah. It doesn't it go in your blood? I don't know how s- anything works in the world. No, you can get it on just like... Well, know. Chris, as a kid, swallowed the slime, which is why his chicken pox were everywhere. Oh, gross. <laughs> Ugh. I, I like the way I, it I feels, know he I said. I chicken pox. <laughs> Is that still a thing that happens? Do kids still get chicken pox? Have we figured that out yet? Oh, they for sure get chicken pox. Yeah. I don't think that's gone. Man, that I just it just occurred to me that is one of the most intense uh, sort of switch flips from being a child to being an adult without children in terms of shit I absolutely never there's a, think about mm-hmm. anymore. I'm pretty sure at this point there is a chicken pox vaccine. That doesn't mean kids still don't get chicken pox because mm. kids don't get fucking vaccines. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm nostalgic for back before there was a chicken pox vaccine. Why? Remember, I mean, kids these days can't get chicken pox, which is a thing that you just kind of can stay home from school for a little while. It's just, you know, I mean, <laughs> things were just simpler back then. I mean, back Sa- when you did get chicken pox and you did get well, vaccinated. On the note of kids being exposed to things, I mean, Sarah did point out also that this could, this is sort of an interesting trend to occur in an, uh, like, in contrast to the last several decades just nonstop ratcheting up of sort of overparenting, hyper protectionist kind of helicopter oversight of children. Mm-hmm. Anyway, now the hot trend is to just like mix together borax and Elmer's glue and play with it. Seems good. So I mean that seems I don't know, it seems fine. I assume that kids aren't gonna die from it, at least not very many of them. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it seems better. I'm nostalgic for back when infant mortality was way higher, when kids <laughs> were able to just die all the fucking time, you know? I mean, I feel like... Get a fucking spine, kids. Go eat some dirt. Go. We need a good uh, war, Chris. We need a war. No, I'm just, I feel like the <laughs> Elmer's Corporation wouldn't be pushing slime this hard if they could be tied to 
child deaths in a lawsuit or something, right? It's probably I don't fine. think the Elmers is going to kill. I think kids have been eating Elmers glue for a long ass time. Yeah, but the borax. Oh I don't God. think the kids eat borax. If you tell if you start I mean, I don't think Elmer's glue has anything to do with kids eating borax. They wouldn't know anything about that. They don't advocate slime recipes involving ant oh, poison. Oh no. Oh, you can get burned. Oh no, this girl got burned handling the homemade slime. Oh no. And the doctor says it's because of the borax. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh, this is terrible. Mm. She had second degree burns. Oh my god, really? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh no. It's fine. Oof. It felt like really hot and tingly. Also, I like the slime, she said. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> no. Uh, not the second part. <laughs> the first part was true. My mom was a science teacher. Yeah. Among other things. My mom was a science teacher, a German teacher, and a home economics teacher. So mm-hmm. I, I had a bunch of g- good things in my house. Yeah. And Does your mom speak German? If she tried, she could probably pick it back up, but she's not used that oh, in, but she, in but she decades. Had, I mean, she at one okay. point, yes. That's cool. I never um, But we had... In the garage, like a, a bunch of sort of just big plastic trays from chem labs and a bunch of just pipettes and whatever else. And uh, I used to make stuff out there. And the place that it always got dangerous was when I got into mixing heavy chemicals with home cleaning solutions. Oh, man. Because bleach is in stuff. And when you fucking pour stuff together with bleach, you can make fumes come up that will just make you not be alive or make you go unconscious. Like, you can Mm, make... I was always amazed by my ability to pour things together that would create science fiction movie-esque reactions, including very thick smoke coming out of things and things bubbling over and exploding. And at one point, my mom came in there and was like, what are you doing? What did you put into those things? And then, like, immediately opened the garage door and, like, put a bunch of fans in there and dragged me out of the garage. And I have no idea what I was making, but I was really excited by how aggressively I was filling our garage with (laughs) smoke that smelled weird. So uh, I hope that kids combining all sorts of cleaning supplies as well as uh, very heavy chemicals that you can still buy in an unlicensed way to make slime will result in <laughs> uh, in kids learning things about science such yeah. as you can get burned <laughs> and you can well, fuck that, up your garage your and your mom will freak come out true. I know it's really I am nostalgic for that time when I was uh, able to almost <laughs> kill myself apparently by poisoning <laughs> myself in my garage <laughs> I told the story of my friend who decided to grind his own model rocket fuel in his garage on one of these podcasts, right? It was eighth grade or ninth grade, I think. So he And he was like a super, super pimply nerd. Uh, and he was really into model rocketry, as one might be who's a super, super pimply nerd. Uh, he also had like science, this, as he had science parents uh, and a bunch of chemistry garbage in his garage. And he decided that he was going to start making his own model rocket fuel from scratch, I think by like grinding up the insides of model rocket fuel that already existed of like, sort of the compounds inside like the firework pr- pr- things and then mixing his own stuff in and re-solidifying it of course if you're a kid and you're grinding up flammable powder it's just going to explode so he caused a huge explosion that just like enveloped his entire face Ugh. Uh, and then he was wrapped up in bandages drinking from a straw for weeks because he burned all the skin off his face but he never had acne again <laughs> <laughs> like to this day he has just like Great skin. Perfect skin. Yeah. Hmm. Gwyneth so, Paltrow, are you listening? So kids yeah. today, if they would just blow up their own faces in their garage with model rocket fuel, they get a... <laughs> that's, that's the new trend. Kids went from making Goop, slime... Yeah. Goop definitely has to have a and slime. Then he, right? Oh, yeah. You <laughs> there's so. got to be like a Goop-branded yeah, slime. It took me a second. That's Gwyneth Paltrow's yeah. weird health brand. <laughs> like, Goop, like, Goop yeah. slime? Yeah, that's got to be yeah. a thing. This episode of Important If True is brought to you by Quip. Electric toothbrushes, well-designed, convenient, uh, sleek, and delivered to your home with brush head refills every three months. If you go to tryquip.com slash thumbs, you can get on that refill, that brush head refill plan with $10 off your first brush head refill. I got mine recently, as I said. Been brushing me. Oh, that reminds me. I went to the dentist like three days <clears throat> ago. They fucking flipped their shit over how good my teeth were. That I've never had dental assistance. the the dental the the guy came in after the dentist did the inspection, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I don't have good news. I have great news. <laughs> the dentist said your teeth are amazing. You did a great job. I'm not exaggerating. He fucking wouldn't stop talking about what a great job I did with my teeth." 
while he's sitting there and I've got the like shit in my mouth and I'm like, oh, thank you. And he's <laughs> like, it's just really great. You promise you're going to keep this up? And we're like, yeah, okay. And then he started asking me if I was going to go to the Warriors parade and stuff and I couldn't really answer him. Uh, but it was a, it was intense. It was bordered on like uncomfortable and sort of. Let me touch uh, your teeth. Yeah, it started getting really, really weird. Uh, <laughs> what? No, I just like he would would not. Uh, it sounds like I'm bullshitting, but he would not stop <laughs> telling me what a great job I was doing brushing my teeth. Huh? Yeah, it was kind of strange. But that said. Thank you, Quip, for <laughs> enabling that weird experience. And if you go to tryquip.com slash thumbs, you can get $10 off your first brush head refill and maybe enjoy an equally uh, sort of gratifying and then increasingly uncomfortable and unwanted um, series of aggressive compliments from your dental assistant. That's tryquip.com slash thumbs. This episode of Important If True is also brought to you by Hover, our favorite place to register domain names. We've been using Hover for, for many years at Idle Thumbs. And uh, if you go to, ho- what is it? Hoisted.zone. Hoisted.zone. You, uh, 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 a domain we just registered moments ago. Easily and quickly. Easily and quickly with Hover. It took us no time. And then setting up the uh, forward was like the f- super fast. It took a matter of seconds. Hoisted.zone for $2 off your domain name registration. Yeah, so your goal is to come up with a better domain than Hoisted.zone. Good luck. By visiting Hoisted.zone. Yeah, we got the best one. But there's <laughs> many other amazing domain names available to you for good rates, and it's incredibly easy to set up and point it wherever you want. Mm-hmm. They, do, they also recently redesigned their control panel sort of dashboard for managing your account. It's even better than it was before, which was already probably the just easiest one of these to use on any of these sites. It's just really, it's it's really great. Hover is really, really good. They have good customer support. Um, it's easy. And hoisted.zone will get you $2 off your domain name registration. No one sent us a poo story this week, or someone did, but I don't think uh, right. oh, oh, yeah, yeah they someone did. Sent us <laughs> Are you kidding? A fucking intense poo story. Hey, okay, I guess I didn't look. I guess I stopped. I reading. mean, I wasn't planning on reading it, but. Okay. But did you read oh, that? Oh, the one? super long one? Yeah. I started. I, Are you I describing the story? It. It, was t- it was just too long. Oh, my God. I read the whole thing. Oh, uh, yeah. It was intense. I thought Nick was talking about the poo. It, it was, was a four out of ten too long on the <laughs> on the Bristol scale. Yeah, on the Bristol scale, it's not a rating. It's not out of ten. <laughs> it's not a quality evaluation. Why not? That's you're thinking. Uh, I believe of my endorsement for this week. RateMyPoo.com. <laughs> oh, no. Don't you remember Rate yes, My Poo? I do. Oh, that was real. Yeah. yeah. It, oh, I don't remember that. It looked oh, like yeah, hot or not real. from it back was, when oh, hot or not was like it was gosh. of that era. Oh, I was so was nostalgic awful. for that era <laughs> of, <laughs> rate, of Rate My Poo. Remember when people were nostalgic for RateMyPoo.com? Yeah, like yesterday. Yeah. Uh, that now these days they're nostalgic for not having that nostalgia <laughs> from, from two days before when they yeah. weren't nostalgic for that. <laughs> I think we're back. Yeah, we're back, and we have a a complicated premise here from Harvey, who says, "Hey guys, hey Jake, hi, oh, oh man, hi, 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 hello." So I thought I'd share something. Throw me off my game. I thought I'd share something I work on every now and then when I'm bored at work and could use some help with. You seem to be the experts on the implications of nonsense. I'm trying to construct the perfect wish. Oh, man. A wish that would benefit all of humanity and not just myself. But it also has to be ironic twist proof in case the genie is malevolent, as they (laughs) often are. (laughs) This is is a very good good premise. I'm glad that this is what this person spends their time doing. What I have is this. Okay, everything I'm about to say is one sentence, single sentence. I wish every human being, the definition of which will still include everyone affected by this wish, alive today and born from this point in time forward, will have the innate ability that they will naturally and always know how to use to create from nothing, at no expense to the body or environment, any foodstuffs or beverage up to an amount of 10 pounds at one time that they want, 
onto a surface within 10 feet of them, which will disappear if not eaten in 20 minutes, and said foodstuffs or beverage will not harm the creator or anyone else who eats or drinks it and will contain the right amount of calories and nutrients the person who eats or drinks it needs at that moment it is consumed, if any, to maintain optimal performance of the human body and all of its systems, unless optimal performance of a system would harm the creator, in which case the food will supply only as much as the body needs to remain as healthy as possible, and said foodstuffs and beverage will taste the desired way the creator meant it to taste. That's the end of the sentence. So help you God. <laughs> <laughs> the weakest wording for me right now is the on a surface bit, but I was trying to make it so you couldn't summon food inside of someone's throat. I knew this would devastate the economy at first, but I think we could recover and it would save countless lives, as no one would ever go hungry again and a lot of disease that comes from poor diet would be eradicated. Restaurants might still exist as a niche thing for purists who still want real food, but I think the wish com combined with the automation of industry increasing more and more could help lead to a much better society where work is only done by those who want to challenge. Poke your holes, tell me why it might be bad. I need to know what to say when I find that gin someday. That, okay, one, that is amazing. Two, I, f I feel like there are some very substantial holes if you come at this from a couple of angles. Yeah. First, it seems very focused on food not being wasted because it's not eaten, which is true where it says, you know, food will disappear yeah. And, yeah. and whatever. And um, uh, there's a couple problems with that. One... Being able to summon 10 pounds of food that lasts 20 minutes is great if you have benevolent intentions for that food. Um, the food that is not eaten and does not go inside of a person could still be used to totally fuck people up. What do you mean? I could wish the 10 pounds of coconuts fall on you over and over and over and over <laughs> again until you die. Though, on the and then they disappear. Ah, what about an inclined surface? Fair. <laughs> yeah, or also I could just ask them to show up and then fucking beat you with them and then they would disappear because no one eats them. The perfect crime. <laughs> that is, yeah, I mean. You could, well, you could f figure out, okay, you know what would be delicious to me and what I crave more than any other food? <laughs> the most dense 10 pounds of concentrated food shaped like a club. <laughs> And then I'm going to well, fucking like a, like beat the lamb? shit out of you. Yeah, give me just a frozen <laughs> hawk that I'm going to beat the shit out of you with, and then it's just going to disappear. It's gone. And yeah, if I eat well, it, if I eat I it, mean, then, so I, are, then the evidence stays there. Are you implying that there would be an increase in food-related weapons simply, simply because of the evidence issue? Because right? you can summon... 10 pounds of, of anything. I mean, you, uh, oh, you you're could, right. Oh. You, could, you could go into a high security area where yeah. you go through like the, well, the machine okay. and they scan Yeah, then you're you, like, all I need is this table. Thing. There would be no flat surfaces anywhere. Everything would be at the incline like that they round, realized. Everything would be round. <laughs> yeah, all <laughs> floors would be sort of sloped at the incline limit that they know would negate your ability to summon food onto it. Mm. So someone, if someone just goes, what's in this fucking backpack? And he folds out like a little like airplane tray. Like, oh he shit, he's going to he bring the food say, in. He doesn't say a flat level surface. He just says onto a surface within 10 feet of them. That's all he says. That doesn't mean it can't. you can't put it on a round thing. Oh, then I'm summoning... I'm definitely summoning 10 pounds of coconuts a second onto that flat surface that is the ceiling above your head. <laughs> You're fucking gone. A second? <laughs> that's true. He doesn't limit, no the time rate, limit. limit the rate of summoning. Yeah, so I, that's that's number one hole for me. <laughs> Dude, this is the lamest. Well, no, wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I'm going to... Mm, uh, okay, let's get a little more specific, wait, though. Hold on. I don't think... I don't buy this, actually. <laughs> this is the lamest wizard battle that anyone has yeah. ever... Yeah, I have actually. a far more... Coconuts! <laughs> Coconuts! Okay! Legs of meat! Lamb. Coconuts! I, I have a coconuts! Okay, I, have a I challenge thee, sir! I Ten coconuts! <laughs> it's true! Okay, I got that one out of the way as the precursor to what I think is the far more important what consideration. Nick, what's your, what's your Well, no, look, take? I mean, all right, you, we'll get to your point, too, but I think point one has some problems. First of all, since within 10 feet, I don't think a coconut would kill anybody in a, from a 10 yeah, foot Yeah, that's true. Drop. It would just be really annoying. I think you would just go, oh, no, like coconuts again. <laughs> it's true. This is annoying. Why are all these I'm, coconuts okay, falling on me all the time? I also, a 10 pound, well, like, you would know. beef anything I don't think would be heavy enough to really be effective as a oh, weapon. Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe a, a baseball bat doesn't weigh 10 pounds. A frozen well, piece of meat can kill someone. Yeah. Yeah, definitely 10 pound frozen piece of meat. Okay. Still, no coconuts. You're right. <laughs> You're right. I just, I, I feel like... It, that specific example is not great, but I think that it reveals that there is a hole in okay. the well, fact no, that the food If you were at a height already, could, if you were at height already and you were aiming at somebody like 
20 stories down. I that guess would be, I just mean yeah. that the, the food, even though it's just a very eating centered thing, but this is the more important one. And this is, um, this is why the pooping robots are important to me. I f- yeah, what if you went on top of the Empire State Building? Yeah, yeah, and that, someone that's right off the ledge. That's still right. within ten feet of you. Yes, but yeah. you could definitely drop it on someone. Here's the, here's the thing about this: that it, this is the same thing that was funny to me about the uh, robots earlier. This scenario is not taking into account the fact that human beings shit things. Yeah, and this is saying. What I want is for human beings, whenever they want, to summon 10 pounds of food of their own desire from nothing. It specifically talks about the fact that it takes no energy on Earth to create and just instantiates new food in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You eat it. It only goes away if it's not, if it's food that has not been eaten for 20 minutes. I ate that food and I turned it into poop. Does that poop stick around? I think so. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So this wish yeah. is the end of civilization Why? because this wish is bringing new material onto Earth that was not there. It's adding uh, mass to uh, planet Earth, however, and however, we're shitting it out. Yeah, but I think it actually is the beginning. It's the dawn of a new civilization, Jake, because you could use that food not for eating purposes. Yeah, right? you said food, but you meant poop. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the food now. I'm saying you don't have to eat it. You can use it for whatever you want. No, it, it goes away in 20 minutes if you don't eat it. In 20 minutes. However, if it, if it's you're not, you could convert it into energy in yes, that time. Yes, I if don't know can, if that's true. If it's, if it's never been eaten, I think that whatever well, is. But you I just think have that, processes. I think that, scientists would figure out how to convert to energy within 20 it, minutes. I mean, I don't, the poop economy would become a thing, right? I mean, if the poop sticks, sticks around, you can at least convert that into energy. You would employ people to sit there on toilets. Yes. In ch- whatever food is least and digestible, right. eat just that, food and then <laughs> yes, themselves. that's true. And this. <laughs> I, I, I think that it's... But I think Nick's con- energy thing still holds, right? I, like, I, I, once you've converted the food to, like, some other form of energy, I think that no what that energy, like, somehow can dis- just, like, disappear. Okay, make well, sense. we're well, summoning the food by way of magic created by a genie. I think that it's <laughs> safe to, to say that the rule as it stands right now says if that matter created is not eaten within 20 minutes, it goes away, that whatever you transform that food into will also disappear from the earth. Okay. If it did not pass through a human digestion uh, system... So we have to get really, really good at harnessing the well, power of Well, I think of poop. you would have that's thousands why we've of people got these standing poop around. Robots. At- oh, fuck. That's why we have the poop uh, That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay. You eat. We're creating all this poop yeah. because we can create infinite food that does not Wait, use up energy on Earth. but those robots don't eat poop. They're, they, why not? They eat organic mass and create their own version of poop. Oh, I guess that's true. I think yeah. no. Those, I mean, they've got cell phones that are powered by pee. They've got, those robots have got to just eat poop. They could. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you could also just have some kind of power plant where you employ thousands of people to just create food within the power plant, right? I mean, like, there's... Why? To, to create, create energy, energy that would then be instantly used before the 10 minutes is up. I, I think that... I think You that, think that's cheating? I don't think it is. By, think, the, by the definition of the wish, I don't think so. I think that that wish says that the stuff goes away if you don't eat it after 20 minutes. Yeah, the food does, minutes. but the food's gone. It doesn't... What difference does it make now? The food's mm. gone. I think that... Okay. The way that I'm thinking about it is when you bring that... I'm sorry that I'm getting so into this, but I really firmly <laughs> believe that we should we should think about the the fact that the, the crucial part of this, I think, is that you are creating matter th- where there was none. And I feel like those atoms that you bring into the earth, if I think if those don't serve their original purpose of being eaten, they disappear again from existence. That's I think you have to you can't short circuit it by saying you would just get free energy when this was stuff was created that, for the purpose of eat, being that, eaten. I don't know. That seems like you're just at that point. How would that be true? What would actually? What are you saying would happen? Let's say you fed of your fucking banana into your power plant, right? And it turns it somehow into energy that is stored that it goes into the electrical grid. What are you proposing happens twenty minutes later? I think that it just goes boo. Like you just lose a little bit. <laughs> that, I totally don't buy that. I think that's crazy. All right. Well, yeah. Then I mean, I guess. Like, I mean, how far can you take that? What if in that time you use it to power a light switch within the twenty minutes? Like, then what? I think that what you're describing, Chris, uh, is people abusing magic and then getting cursed and not being able to quite understand why <laughs> bad things keep happening to them. Yeah, and it's I because mean, we took this bountiful gift that we were given by this benevolent jin. And then, I mean, immediately <laughs> abused it. At <laughs> least yeah. abused it in a way that will result in our own demise by our own ability to track it, which is feed, give robots the taste for things from the human body. I feel like those feces. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, and I then think, the human. That's like that's but, that's like 
we're giving ourselves classic hubris of just like invent yeah. robots that love invent feces. An entire feces industrial complex. Right, and then they yeah. strap us in to the poo things instead of us agreeing to strap ourselves into them to create electricity. Right. No, no, no. At least give it to the robots first to do it to us yeah. and not just abuse the powers of a genie. Yeah. Come on. Sure. Like it, then we, we just won't even know and we'll, we, we'll you know... I think if, if if I mean I think that I think one thing that is interesting about this is that if you actually if you actually read this entire thing to a genie, that genie is gonna make it his fucking goal in life to, to be like this yeah. is how much you get fucking buckle in. Oh yeah, jackass! Oh, yeah, you're this is gonna get real. Like <laughs> right? this is, you think you're gonna outwit me, the genie? Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Like, a, this is a challenge. A this is a direct <laughs> challenge. Yeah. I know. I like. <laughs> the if, genie is just a high powered lawyer in this case, yeah, right? right? If, like, the genie if, is just. Yeah, yeah, if the genie is going to fuck you up, if it's, if it's a trickster genie, they're going to fuck you up no matter what. And you, if you if right, exactly the benign version of the fuck up is you just say enough food for everyone, and there's like, oh, there's too much food. Like, oh no, this this is like creative fucking hoisting is going to occur at the hands of yeah, this I know. Feed. This that's not just like, oh, I guess there's too much food. It's like there's fast no way here hellscape of poo factories. There, all yeah. humans enslaved well, okay. by poo robots. A ge- there's, yeah, there's no way that a genie does not put on like some half moon glasses and then read this <laughs> yeah. for like. 20 minutes before agreeing to grant your wish yeah. and like yeah and then has his lawyer read it uh, right yeah the genie's I, like oh, hold <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 wait. I need a week get back to me I've highlighted I'll some give passages you, I'll give you a red line in like this our, uh, yeah no I, I but I think I mean is there a way to just close it like is there a way to actually make it airtight like I feel like if you wanted to just make it about the eating and, and and avoid catastrophe wouldn't you just simply say that if the food is used for anything other than eating uh, that it just disappears or you know what I mean like isn't there a way to just kind of make it work I feel like there is how do you on, at what point does it disappear like how does it divine intent like yeah. once you start well could it, it like tie you could tie it to the person that created the, it right the Lego lamb sl- smashes into your skull it disappears like if what it ha- touches anything other than the person who created its mouth <laughs> oh my god then, then you couldn't use people? a fork what about people who need to be? Mm. Yeah, when does that happen? What about people who need to be fed intravenously for like yeah. reasons? Um, but yeah, then you couldn't touch it with a four. It's like all. I like the, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> let's also let's also step back a little bit and point out that this is an amazing luxury that it provides to all of mankind. So, what about people that need to be fed intravenously? Hopefully, so so you've you've inadvertently now <laughs> poked a hole in this entire plan, which is that if we are all being fed by a magical thing that will give us ten pounds of food whenever we want, we're not going to fucking take care of anyone else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what about the person who wants to eat intravenously? <laughs> Maybe they should fucking be able to talk and wish for their food like the rest of us. I'm not fucking making it. I've got all the food I need. Like that's it. You want some coconuts? <laughs> <Yeah>. Shut up. <laughs> you want some coconuts on your head again? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. No, I think you're right. I think that's Jake uh, has sealed. I think Jake has put the final. Key on this question by That's pointing fair. out that we're going to be dipshits no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. That poop robot could fucking feed that guy. Yeah. Yep. Um, shall we do some... <laughs> God, no one would even take care of the poop robots. They would just be like sort of on the ground with people mm-hmm. living in their infinite poop that they create yeah. from eating this food and pooping it. <laughs> yeah. It would be like little wallies just driving around through mountains of poo. Oh, I have to point out, this is actually... This maybe makes... This puts in undefined but sort of ominous Paul on this. Google's responses to these questions. Love it. I like it. I love this. <laughs> I think that alone says you fucked up, Harvey. Google's we like, already know. give the me an infinite you, fuel source. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. This is great. Do this immediately. Signed, your AI overlord. Signed to the like, Alphabet Corporation. Yeah, that, I think that is all that we need to know in terms of not doing this. All right. Uh, that's probably it for this week. You guys want to endorse yeah, some let's, things? Let's endorse. I'll, I'll kick off endorsements. Uh, I am going to endorse a board game Ooh. that we've talked about before on our other podcast, Idle Thumbs, but I was thinking about it the other day and I just ordered it on Amazon because I don't have my own copy. And that is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is a very, it's an unusual board game, I would say. We've We've all played it, right? I have not. Oh, Nick, you haven't. Jake, you definitely have because oh, yeah. you own, I own it. it. Um, 
Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is a game that can be played conceivably alone, right? Yeah. With any nu- with any number of players, and it's set up in it's, a. It's better in sort of like three to five people. Yeah, probably. that is definitely the sweet spot. Yeah, I would if I had to throw out a number, I'd say four is ideal, probably. Um, the way it works is there are a fixed number of cases. I mean, you can essentially only play the game X number of times, however many number of times there are cases in the game, because once you know the the actual solution to each case, that's it. The object of the game is basically to solve Sherlock Holmes style crime mysteries. You're playing ostensibly as Sherlock Holmes sort of Baker Street irregulars, little street urchins, and you're trying to solve it as efficiently as you can relative to how long it takes Sherlock Holmes to solve it, which is always like impossibly quickly and easily. And the way that you achieve this is you're given sort of a starting premise about the crime, like someone turned up dead and there are a bunch of materials for each case, like newspapers, there's a map of London and you- a a telephone directory of a ton of names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're all sitting around the table being like, oh, let's, let's go to like, you know, Gray's Manor because I th- I think there's going to be I think the person the you know based on this information I read an article in the newspaper that indicates that like something happened there two nights ago it sounds related to the murder yeah, yeah. so we're, and then they're, we're going to go there so then you look up doing that thing in this case and then there's a huge book of stuff that happens yeah, and then it'll give you like a paragraph of what happens when you go to Gray's Manor during this case at this time in the investigation and mm-hmm. that will give you new hypotheses yeah. so it's and basically everything you do sort of counts as it taking more time to solve the case and there's a way to score it which is not doesn't really not that important but the fun part is working together to yes. sort of look at all this crazy forensic evidence and sort of little clues and interviews that you do and try to actually solve the case mm-hmm. it's really good it's a it's a really unusual mix of kind of rules based and more sort of subjective storytelling game. Yep. Uh, it splits the difference really well and it's just a really fun collaborative group activity. You, you all you all sort of succeed or fail together. Uh, it's not not really a competitive game. Uh, just a very fun unique concept. What well, a sort of side thing that's fun about it is each case accumulates the all of the collective evidence from the previous case oh, as right, part of yeah. it. So that can sometimes be daunting, but if you play a few of them in a row, you end up actually sort of getting a working knowledge of that version of the city of London and of like the last three weeks of news from all the newspapers and people, your sort of ability to role play without thinking about it, like, oh, that's like that thing that happened back down at the docks last Mm -hmm. month. Maybe that was actually about this, uh, you know, or like that time that that the jewelry store owner reported something stolen that turned out to be unrelated. Maybe it is now. Like, they, it does a good job of tying that sort of stuff in over time as well. Mm-hmm. To the point that maybe it gets a little too Baroque if you keep playing it <laughs> uh, and aren't particularly sharp at it. But it's it's really fun to, if, yeah. you, if you like a mystery. I think this game came out maybe something like 30 years ago. I think it's yeah. fr- a French game originally. And it was reprinted within the last few years. Yep. And is just... It was really in the, now. It, yeah. It was in <clears throat> in short supply for a while and in very high demand, but it seems like it's yeah. It's, it, oh, it first came out in 1991. I yeah, guess. you can yeah. get it now. And I think it's there's a there's a an iPad version as well. Oh, crazy! Yeah, cool. Um, so that's it. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Um, Nick, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to endorse the failed TV pilot Look Well. Oh, good um, call. Whoa. In honor of Adam West sadly passing, yeah. uh, I yeah. guess, last week it would be yeah. at this point. Um, uh, Look Well was, I think, a 91 or 92, um, 1992 uh, pilot that Conan O'Brien and Robert Smigel created as a vehicle for like a resurgence for Adam West. Um, Who played and, Batman in the yes, 1966 Batman. Which, which we've, TV which series Chris movie. endorsed yeah. um, a couple weeks ago, probably the first episode actually. But anyway, uh, the show is about like a, a uh, an action, like a former action star who at some point was, was uh, I guess, like deputized um, or something. Like he's an official lawman technically, but now he's sort of in the, you know, waning period of his life and just decides to actually solve crimes and just be a guy that is that, uh, which is a great premise for Adam West. And it was, a I don't know, I feel like today that show probably would get picked up and probably would have a home somewhere. And I'm sad that it didn't, um, but what, it is. A, what's it called again? Look Well. Okay. Yeah, it's a really interesting artifact. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very good. Nice. Yeah. Uh, on, the, on that note, really quickly, actually, there's a movie 
that was released this year along very similar lines called Mindhorn. I don't know if you've you've heard of this. It's a British film. Familiar. Oh, it's it's available to stream now. I think it is. Yeah, I we watched it a few weeks ago when we were in London recently. There were posters for it everywhere. It was actually released in theaters there, um, and did not come out in theaters in the United States. But it is available for streaming on Netflix. It has a very similar premise about a sort of f- former um, '70s cop show actor who ends up in a real, mm-hmm. you know, situation and it's that kind of thing. It's uh, Julian Barrett and uh, Steve Coogan are, um, if you're familiar with a certain, like, yeah. era of British television comedy, there there's people from that all over it. Anyway, it's called Mindhorn and it's fun uh, if you like that kind of thing. Good cool. shadow endorsement. Yeah. Jake? Uh, I would like to endorse a, a Spotify playlist. Um, our friend Chelsea... Uh, she like she's been a producer on TV shows or production assistant. She sort of just mm-hmm. does like production and logistics in the inter- MythBusters. Yeah, in in the entertainment industry, and her some facet of her current job involves looking through decades of correspondence between the inventor of television and his wife. That's um, Philo Farnsworth, mm. whose name people probably know actually because of Professor Farnsworth from Futurama, who's named after uh, Philo Farnsworth. Is he meant to be a descendant? Uh, I don't think so. I think that they okay. just they named him after like a lecturer they liked from school and oh, okay. and Farnsworth. But um, that's just when I heard that name for the first time. It's what I thought of. But he he was the inventor of the electric television. Nice. Um, she found amongst his things a playlist written down just on lined paper that he and his wife d- made called "Our Old Favorites Slash Popular Tunes," and it's like a few dozen songs. And Chelsea went and put it on Spotify. And it's really adorable. It's a handwritten pencil yeah. list. It's and really it's, it's charming. A, it's, just a, it's just a great, good playlist. It has good flow. Like, it's a fun listen of just sort of... Old pop music. Yeah, mid-century and earlier pop music. Because he was... A, uh, he died in 1970 and I think was born right around the turn of the century. But... Um, it's good stuff. So if you want to listen to a bunch of songs that the inventor of television and his wife really liked uh, <laughs> in their in their golden years or whatever, uh, check it out. You can get oh, thanks to some good domain name garbage. We yeah. it, you can find it at hoisted dot zone slash playlist. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it's linked in the show notes. There's a Spotify version and an Apple Music version. So if you don't want to go to the Spotify one, look in the show notes, and there's an Apple Music version there. As a reminder, all of our all of the links we discuss, the uh, topics we discuss, endorsements, those are all listed in the show notes. If you watch this show on YouTube, you should go to importantiftrue.com to find the full show notes. And if you subscribe as a podcast, whatever your podcast reader is, um, should have the, the show notes show notes on every, every episode. As we always have those there. Uh, I guess on that, that's it for this week of Important If True. Thank you for listening. If you like this show, please tell a friend. Um, it is really, as I've as I've said before, it is pretty much the main way, one of the only ways, and definitely the main way, we spread the word about this show at all. And if you like it and you think it's enjoyable or funny or or in any way tolerable, uh, <laughs> let someone let someone know. Uh, whether it's on your social media, in person, whatever, it means a lot to us when people do that. Um, very, very, very gratifying. And you can send us email if you have questions, need any advice, uh, need anything explained. Uh, whatever. If, you, if you want us to really come over your elaborate <laughs> wish. <laughs> puzzle through uh, something that... that Bef- before a genie and, and mm-hmm. their lawyer get to it. You can send that correspondence to questions at importantiftrue.com. Uh, all of our other internet-related stuff can be found at importantiftrue.com. And we will be back next week. For Adult Thumbs, I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. And I'm Jake Rodkin. Stay spicy. So that you can poop things out that a robot can <laughs> feed on, which is what they fucking want. We have a late-breaking email Uh-oh. from Kitty, who writes, Dear Thumbs, Alex's poo story is suspiciously close to the events of an episode of Californication where Marcy leaves a used tampon in the toilet, preventing the sale of their house. Stay hoisted, Kitty. No, 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 (laughs) no!
Oh my god. 